everyone, it's Ali, and welcome to my channel. And today I am super excited to take you through all of the books that I read during the month of September. And I'm also gonna share with you a pretty hefty October to be read stack. Okay, so I did have a pretty decent reading month, especially at the end, and that momentum has carried. I feel like I'm going to read so much during this month of October, but before we get into all those, I'll take you through everything that I did read this month. I ended up reading only eight books, and I just say that because I do feel like I read a lot, but one of the books did take me almost a week to get through, so I guess that kind of makes more sense. This first one also took me probably four or five days to really get into. I just had a hard time like actually getting into the story, but then once I did, I ended up really enjoying it. And that is Diane Chamberlain's The Last House on the Street. So this one is set in 1965 and then also 2010. In 1965, our main character Ellie is a college student. She lives in North Carolina. She's kind of just a typical girl dating a guy, but she feels this drive to do a little bit more than what is typical for women at the time. So she finds out about this project called the Scope Project, which was real. It was something that I had never heard about before. But with the Scope Project, college students from the North came down to the Southern states, and these students were tasked with helping to educate the Black community on their right to vote. And even though the main character, Ellie, was a Southern college student, she really just felt this call to be a part of that program. And there were a lot of people in her life who just really didn't understand why she wanted to do it so she faces a lot of backlash but ultimately she does work with the program so that's the 1965 setting and then in 2010 Ellie is an older woman and she forms a relationship with the main character from the 2010 line and as is typical with these kind of split timeline historical fiction books which I love that main character Kayla is finding out more about Ellie and her past. This one was a little bit slow at times but by the end I was flying through the last hundred pages or so. Ultimately it's a four star read from me and I will absolutely be looking for a lot of Diane Chamberlain's other books. Next up I read The Housemaid's Secret by Frida McFadden. This is the second book in the Housemaid series. It's the same main character as the first one and I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil the first one if you haven't read it but I would highly highly recommend this series. I flew through both the first book and the second one and I honestly think I like the second one more. There was just a little bit more depth to it I think. The villain in this story too is really excellent. It's one of the best ones I feel like I've ever read. But if you don't know anything about this series, basically the main character is a housekeeper who has a past of her own. And in both the first book and the second one, she goes into homes that are not quite as they seem and there is a secret involved in both books. I did end up giving both books five stars, but as I said, I think I actually did prefer the second one. Then I read A Court of Mist and Fury, which took me quite a while to get through. I feel like these first three books took me almost the first half of the month to get through. I did really enjoy it, maybe even more so than the first one. Again, both the first and the second I did end up giving five stars. However, this second second one was a lot more sexually graphic than the first one and that's not something that I personally enjoy so I did skim over some sections and so I would just caution you if you are a parent who has a child who's interested and reading these, maybe just look a little bit more into some of these scenes so you can decide if you feel like it's appropriate or not. But the core of the story, I really do like. I really enjoy all of the characters. And originally I was thinking I would just read a book a month until the end of the year. If I did that, I would finish the series, at least the five books that are out now by the end of 2023. But I think I'm actually gonna put the series on hold until January and I might just like binge the other books in the depths of winter of January. And that's mostly just because I feel like each book does take me a solid week or so to get through and I don't wanna rush through it. And this time of year, there were just some other ones that I'd really like to get to. But yeah, the story is very good. I definitely understand the hype. After that, I read something very different, Richard Osman's The Bullet That Missed. This is the third book in the Thursday Murder Club series. I gave this one 4.5 stars and I think this actually is my favorite book in the series so far. Each one just gets a little bit better and better I think. A little bit more depth, a little bit more character development. I would recommend this series if you do enjoy cozy mysteries. Probably not going to be the most insane mystery you've ever read 
but definitely worth reading for the characters. Next was Kate Atkinson's Case Histories. This is the first book in the Jackson Brody detective series. I had actually read, I think randomly, like the fourth or the fifth one. I had picked it up at Goodwill maybe a year or so ago. I didn't realize it was technically in the middle of the series, but I was able to read that just fine. Like I said, didn't even realize it was in the middle of the series. But when I realized that, of course, I decided I'd go back to the beginning and read them first to last. This was great. I gave it 4.5 stars and I very easily could have given it five stars, but just compared to some of the other Kate Atkinson books I've read, I didn't think this was quite as good, so that's why I did give it 4.5. But she's an excellent author. She's one of my top favorites. I'm not a big fan, actually, of, like, detective mysteries. I love a thriller, but, yeah, I don't always love detective books, but this series is absolutely an exception just because I love Atkinson's writing style. Then I switched it up and I picked up this middle grade book. This is The Secret Keepers by Trenton Lee Stewart. This is the author of The Mysterious Benedict Society, which I love. I've talked about it many times here on my channel, so I won't get into it. But I will say, not surprisingly, I did not love this as well as that series. That series is seriously like top in my brain of all series that I've read adult, middle grade, young adult, whatever. But this was absolutely a really cute standalone book, appropriate for all ages. That's why I do really enjoy a lot of middle grade books, actually. And this was a pretty thick one. It was about 500 pages. So this one took me probably about four to five days to get through too. But it's about this boy. He lives with his single mom. They're kind of down on their luck. The mom works several jobs. She's just trying to make it. So during the summer, the boy, who I think is 11 years old, he is left to kind of just go around, wander on his own. He's kind of a misfit. He doesn't have a lot of friends. And he makes a discovery. And it's something that a lot of big wigs are after. So it's kind of a fun adventure story. He's finding out a lot about this secret item. He makes new friends. And a part of the book is set like in a lighthouse on the water. So I think it actually is a really good one to read this time of year. And this one did get four stars from me. It would have easily been at least 4.5, but just the fact that it was 500 pages, I did feel like it could have been edited down a bit. Then I read Fable, which is a young adult book. It actually was a Reese's YA book club pick. And this was just a real fun fantasy. I said in my last video, my fall day in the life vlog, I had just finished this book in that video. And I said it was good if you are like looking for a fantasy, but you don't want to like dive into a 500 plus page book that has this real complicated universe. It's basically like a pirate ship story. So there's nothing like overly complicated about it, I would say. It is about 350 pages, but the words, are, you know, pretty spread out. It's like a shorter book. It's shorter chapters. So I think I got through this in just a couple of days. I did give it four stars and my thought process was like, I liked it. I didn't love it. There is a second book. This is a duology and I'm sure I'll read it eventually. Like if I see it pop up on Book Outlet, I'm sure I'll pick it up, but I'm not dying to read it by any means. There also is another book that's set in the universe and then a prequel to the duology did just come out this fall, I think. But this is another great, I think, atmospheric read for this time of year. And then finally, I went a little rogue from my initial September picks. I didn't get to, I think, about four books that I said I wanted to. And I think I'm gonna push pretty much all of those to November just because I want October, as you'll see in a second, to be very heavy on the thrillers. And to get me started, this one is a thriller. This is The Stranger Upstairs. This was actually the September book of the month pick. As you can see, this is a pretty thin read. I actually ended up reading this all in one day, which is not very common for me. But this follows a therapist who's also trying to make it on social media. And of course, not too surprisingly, she's a therapist who doesn't have it all together. That's a very common theme in a lot of thrillers, I find. But she's trying to present that she's kind of perfect. She has it all together. She and her husband have the perfect marriage, which of course is also not the case. But she's seeing a decrease in attention on social media. So she thinks a great way <laughs> to get some more attention is of course to buy a dilapidated haunted house where a man killed his wife and tried to kill his daughter. Of course, that's what you do, right? And not too surprisingly, as she and her husband start to renovate the house, problems come about. And of course, you're finding out more about the main character and her husband and their not so perfect past. This one I did give five stars and I'm very excited to read more from this author in the future. This was her debut, I believe. All right, but now let's talk about 
the books I've picked out for October. It's quite a lot, but literally today is October 3rd, the middle of the day, October 3rd. And I've actually already read two because I just tend to fly through thrillers and that's the majority of what I'm going to be reading this month. So the first two that I have already read, I'm not going to talk about until my review, but I'll just show you them. I flew through both of them. The first is Alice Feeney, His and Hers, and then Lisa Jules, None of This is True. And this was actually the August book of the month that I wanted to wait and read in October. I very much enjoyed both of these and I would recommend picking them up if you are looking for some thrillers this October. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more books that I picked out. And I am absolutely going to read some more, but I am doing a big birthday book haul, a big birthday book unboxing. So I can't show you those ones yet and I wanna keep them a little bit of a surprise, but I do actually think I could read like 10 to 15 books this month, just because as I said, I do read thrillers quite quickly, usually in like a day and a half or so. But up first, I have this tiny little book by Stephen King. This is Elevation. This might be considered a novella. It looks like it's about 145 pages, but it is a very short book. So this is one I'm sure I'll just read in one sitting. But this one says, Castle Rock is a small town where word gets around quickly. That's why Scott Carey wants to confide only in his friend, Dr. Bob Ellis, about his strange condition. He's losing weight without getting thinner, and the scales register the same whether he's in the clothes or out of them, no matter how heavy they are. Blah, 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 blah. Unlikely alliances form, and the mystery of Scott's affliction brings out the best in people who have indulged the worst in themselves and others. So this is interesting. I don't know if this is even gonna be like a thriller kind of book at all. I might look more into this. It might not be the most appropriate book for this season, but we'll see. Then we have more of a horror read. This is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I did read one other one by him and I thought it was very well written. I didn't like the story in the end because it involved puppets, which I absolutely hate, but I wanted to give him another shot because yeah, his writing style was really good. And I'm definitely intrigued by the first few lines. It says, in horror movies, the final girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll. But after the sirens fade and the audience moves on, what happens to her? So this could be very, very good, very interesting. And I feel like this author, Grady Hendrix, does do a pretty good job with character development, which might be very good for that theme of like, what happens to you after you have suffered a major trauma? Now we've got lots of thrillers coming up. This is Mr. Nobody by Katherine Stedman. I did read this one that they have a picture of in the corner, Something in the Water, and I really, really enjoyed it. Katherine Stedman is an actress and she is an actress who can write well and that's always great to see. But Mr. Nobody is this man who was found on a British beach, nobody knows who he is, and then it says some memories are best forgotten. So it seems like the book is going to follow this neuropsychiatrist, Dr. Emma Lewis, as she is trying to get to the bottom of who this man is. This is one I have been anxiously, anxiously waiting to read until this month. This is All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. She hosts the very popular podcast called Crime Junkies, which I really, really enjoy listening to. But I've heard very good things about this. I've heard she does write pretty well, so I'm hopeful that this is good and that she will write more in the future. But it sounds like this follows a little bit of a cold case, which makes sense because that's a lot of what Ashley Flowers does cover in her podcast. Now we have Karen McManus's Nothing More to Tell. I have read a few books from this author and I've really enjoyed them. She did write the very popular One of Us is Lying series. And that's one I need to go back to because I think I did read the first and the second one quite a while ago, but I pretty much forget it. And there might be like two more that are out now, but I do very much enjoy a good old YA or middle grade. I think this is considered a YA thriller. Sometimes the stories are actually a little bit better than like adult thrillers. It says four years ago, Bryn left St. Ambrose school following the shocking murder of her favorite teacher. I do also really enjoy thrillers, especially that are set in the school setting. The case was never solved. And now that Bryn is moving home, and starting her dream internship at a true crime show. She's determined to find out what really happened. So I think I'm gonna really enjoy this one. I'm sure this is gonna be a pretty quick read. Young adult thrillers tend to have very short chapters. And I think it's just so fun to cozy up with a book like this that you can read pretty quickly, but it's still pretty spooky. Read it in the bath, read it on your couch, snuggled up as it's all dark and moody outside. A couple more thrillers, and then I do have some from other genres. This one is Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Time. This is a Jillian McAllister book. 
And I don't believe I've ever read any from her. It's also a Reese's book club pick. It's also set in late October, so that's perfect. I'll absolutely save this till the end of the month. It says, late October after midnight, you're waiting up for your 18 year old son. He's past curfew. As you watch from the window, he emerges and you realize he isn't alone. He's walking toward a man and he's armed. You see your funny, happy teenage son. He kills a stranger right there on the street outside your house. You don't know who and you don't know why. And then you wake up and it is the day before. So this sounds like it's gonna be a really cool concept. She'll be trying to figure out why her son wants to murder somebody. So I appreciate that because sometimes thrillers, as much as I do love reading them, they can blend together and this is a very different kind of concept. Another one that kind of deals with shifts in time. This is another one that I've been wanting to read for quite a while. I love the cover of this. Very simple, but very effective, I think. This is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. That was so hard for me to say, I swear. But yeah, kind of similar with the last one, just with the shifts in time. It says, Evelyn Hardcastle will die. She will die every day until Aiden Bishop can identify who murdered her and stop the killer. And for Aiden, at the beginning of each day, he wakes up in Blackheath House in the body of a different guest of the gala he attended the night before. And some of those guests are more helpful than others. I think I'm gonna absolutely love this one, very much anticipating five stars. I love whodunit kind of stories. This is compared to an Agatha Christie, more modern Agatha Christie. And this one review says, pop your favorite Agatha Christie whodunit into a blender with a scoop of Downton Abbey, a dash of Quantum Leap, and a liberal sprinkling of Groundhog Day, and you'll get this unique murder mystery. Then I had to break it up a little bit, break up all those thrillers, and I am going to read The Dead Romantics. I'll actually probably read this one pretty soon, I think. This is by the author Ashley Poston, I think is how you say her last name. People love this one. They also love the one that just came out this year from her called The Seven Year Slip. And spoiler, that is one that I picked up for my big birthday book haul that will be coming out next week. I think this one is actually set in the spring, but of course the vibe is very much fall. So I think it's gonna be a great one to read. And then I am going to read this one pretty soon as well. This is Alice Hoffman's Magic Lessons. It's a prequel to Practical Magic. And although I actually really do enjoy the Practical Magic movie, I read Practical Magic the book last year, like the original book, and I did not love it that much. But I think I'm gonna like this one a lot more because it is more of a historical fiction. It's set in Salem, where I'm going this month for a day. I'm so excited. It's set in Salem in the 1600s. So I just think I'm gonna like that setting a little bit more than the traditional, original Practical Magic book. But yeah, as I said, I'm hoping to read even a few more throughout this month. I'm planning on doing a lot of reading and then really whatever I don't read this month will just get kicked over to November. I forgot to mention too that I am starting to read more audiobooks, listen to audiobooks. Right now I am in the middle of listening to Tom Lake when I go on walks and while I'm getting ready in the morning, doing laundry, things like that. I am enjoying it for the most part so far. It's not my favorite kind of book, more of a literary fiction. It follows a woman who's probably about 60 or so and her three young adult daughters are back at her farm because it's the pandemic and the girls are hearing their mom's life story about how she was an actress for a little bit about this guy she dated for a bit. So it is kind of interesting, the back and forth, I do like it. I also really wanna to listen to Little Women on audio. I am going to be going to the Little Woman Orchard House in Concord, Massachusetts. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to listen to the book before I go on that trip, but I do definitely wanna to get to it this month. But all right, everybody, that was my September review and my October TBR. I am so, so excited to do a ton of reading this month. But do let me know what's at the top of your reading list for October. October. I'm always looking for new recommendations, even if I don't get to them until next fall. But if you like this video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help my channel out a lot. But thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!